A box came in the mail. It's pretty big, and it certainly smells like Halloween. Kringle Candle Halloween. We're gonna do a little bit of unboxing today. Welcome everybody to the Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson, and this is a very special day. In 2012, I was driving through a New England and I happened upon a candle company that I had never heard of before, Kringle Candle. And I was astonished to see the showroom and the quality of these candles, but I was even more astonished to find out that the owner of this company was the son of Michael Kittredge II, the founder of the Yankee Candle Company. And when I was in the shop, I picked up this collection, a collection of four Halloween fragrances, Fright Night, Wolfsbane, Kringle Corn, and my favorite, Witch's Cauldron. Now quickly, these candles became a staple, a tradition of my Halloween season. And in 2014, I stopped in to Kringle once more to replenish these candles. And I was surprised to see that these candles in October were on the clearance table for $4.99 each. Well, this could only have meant one thing, that they were trying to clean out inventory of these candles, meaning the candles most likely were not performing well as far as sales are concerned. And when I found out that these candles were retired, I mentioned them as much as I possibly could here on the candle enthusiast to strike up as much interest in these fragrances as I could in hopes that Kringle Candle would one day re-release this collection. So here we are in 2019 and the day has come. These candles have made their return, but not just the original four. There's a whole slew of new fragrances for Kringle Candle, but also uh, Kringle's subsidiary company, Country Candle as well. So let's break this open and let's check these candles out and maybe even cross-reference them with these original Kringle Candles to see if the aromatics have changed, the aromatic profile in any way. And I am also not going to be reading the fragrance notes, but if you do check out the description below, all the fragrance notes will be included. I just want to go into this completely blind without any preparation of reading any description or fragrance notes. So let's do this. Are you ready? We're going to make the first incision. Let's start with the country candles. Candle number one, black cat. Candle number two, Sleepy Hollow. Candle number three, there it is, Witch's Cauldron. Candle number four, Zombie Night. Number five, Trick or Treat. Number six, Candy Corn. And here we go, the limited edition tumblers, Day of the Dead. Graveyard Night. I just want to draw your attention real quick to the shine on some of these hot spots on the label. It's reflective. So if we put light, you see the jack-o'-lantern's eye? It reflects light. It's almost like a mirror. We have Haunted House. It's alive. And last but certainly not least, Witch's Cauldron. This is it. If you told me a couple of years ago 
that I'd be holding a brand new freshly poured witch's cauldron in my hand. I may not have believed you, but I would have wished it to be true. Here it is. Let's get rid of this box. Okay, so first thing that I've noticed is that not all of the candles were shipped in this box. As I was pulling them out, I was wondering, wait a minute, there are a few missing. That being Wolfsbane, uh, Candy Corn in the Tumblr, Poison Apple, and maybe a couple of others. I didn't get Black Bat in the limited edition Tumblr. But nevertheless, let's look at uh, the majority of these candles. I wanna start off by cross-referencing the re-releases. I wanna look at the original 2014 pours that I have here and compare them with the 2019. And there's no sense of waiting. Let's jump into the most anticipated Witch's Cauldron. So this is a 2014 pour. I produced several videos uh, evaluating Witch's Cauldron. I'll put the link of those videos in the description below. I'm not gonna do in-depth evaluations of these candles. That would take me forever. Instead, I'm going to do uh, these periodically through uh, the next couple days maybe the next week or two. But I do want to give them a brief sniff and share with you my initial impressions. So like I said, um, Witch's Cauldron to me is the epitome of Halloween fragrances. It's not for everybody. It's legitimately smoky, like uh, a wet hickory smoke uh, mulch patchouli, earthy, old wood. I say this smells like an extinguished campfire. Like if you had a raging campfire in the woods and it started to rain. And there's a sweetness, a fruitiness to this, a cherry note. And uh, even a little bit of a cola armoretto note as well. So uh, an interesting little uh, tidbit that I always share about this candle. It's like you had a campfire and you doused it out with uh, two liters of Dr. Pepper. Uh, it sounds a little bit strange, but trust me, it's uh, the most amazing, spooky, yet very bubbly and friendly candle. So here we go, first time ever, which one do I smell? Let's smell the country candle version first. Okay, so first thing I'm noticing is that, remember, this candle is about five years old, and uh, this is freshly poured, and just smelling these two together, this one is incredibly more intense. Now, that could be for several reasons. Um, you know, this candle, because it's older, it might mean uh, there's been a little bit of concentration happening in the glass. As far as the aroma profile, uh, from what I can tell smelling this cold, it's right on. Uh, but I'm noticing it's, it's, it's restrained. It's a little bit pulled back and maybe this is a good thing because uh remember this was not a popular seller i'm speculating but like i said on sale for 4.99 on clearance in october um so maybe drawing back the intensity of this candle is exactly what this candle needed let me do something real quick I'm not gonna light this candle and I'm not gonna burn this candle, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this flame. This is a creme brulee torch. And I'm just gonna hit the wax gently, not with the flame. I'm just gonna warm it up. I'm not even gonna put the flame next to the wax. But what this will do is warm up that wax, exude a little bit of the oils. This way I can get a better read on the candle that helped out extremely 
Uh, just by adding a little bit of heat, you can use a heat gun, a blow dryer if you want. You don't want to melt the wax, you just want to put a little bit of heat on it. Will really help pull out uh, the aromatics uh, when you're doing these cold sniff evaluations. So my first impression is that uh, these candles, undeniably, if I smelled this candle and you didn't tell me what it was, I'd be saying, wow, that's witch's cauldron. However, I will say, uh, from just smelling this country candle, they drew back a lot on the smoke and the, the, the woodiness and the campfire notes. I'm not saying it's not there, but when you smell this candle, there is a massive, uh, massive hickory smoke extinguish campfire, smoldering campfire, white ashy materials uh, from a bonfire, you name it. Now, that's not to say when you burn this candle, those notes will not come through a little bit more. I feel like everything's there, only they may have played with the ratios just a little bit to make this uh, much more friendly for the masses. I'm definitely not complaining at all, but we still have the limited edition soy blend tumbler. Now, Kringle candle tumblers are not soy blends, typically. I've heard that they've been doing this uh, recently, uh, but uh, for whatever reason, they decided to do it with these Halloween candles. The soy wax blend is going to be softer, meaning it will have a lower temperature melting point. You can see that the wax is this very dark slate gray, borderline black color. And the glass tumbler is indeed opaque. If I take the light and I put the light up against the glass, you will see some of the light pouring through, but this truly is opaque. So I think if you decided to get one or the other, if you got both, there's nothing to be upset about. A lot of people weren't sure which one to buy. Arguably the paraffin will have a longer shelf life. However, these are limited edition, so they'll be a little bit more collectible. Based on my initial impression here, smelling both of these, the two new witches' cauldrons smell for the most part, identical. There really is no difference. Of course, the soy wax blend on cold sniff is going to be a little bit more intense, just because it's uh, soy wax is a little bit easier to smell cold versus paraffin, but the aromatic profiles seem the same. But with that said, this might be upsetting for some people, but this also is probably a great thing for most people because like I said, this one, the original is intense. I am wholeheartedly going to say the original Witch's Cauldron is more smoky, more uh, woody, and more of that campfire smell where the sweeter, more bubbly notes, the armoretto, the nuttiness, the, the fruitiness, the cherry notes, be a little bit more of the priority in these new 2019 pours. However, when I burn these candles, you never know what's truly going to happen. One way or the other, there's no way I am disappointed. This is amazing. Witch's Cauldron is officially back, and if you have an opportunity to get your hands on these, uh, well, this one is sold out. Maybe it'll come back next year, but uh, if you can get your hands on the Country Candle Paraffin Apothecary Jar, 
it's well worth the money. Even if you don't think you'll enjoy it, it's worth having on your shelf for the sheer fact that it is such a sought after candle. Let's continue. So since my box did not contain Wolfsbane or Fright Night, uh, I, I, guess, I guess I only have one more comparison to do today, and that is going to be Candy Corn. Now, the original name for this candle was Kringle Corn, and you can see the labels are uh, identical. The artwork is the same, and that's going to be the case for the limited edition tumbler. This Kringle Corn was and still is very rich, very intense. It takes some liberties. It's very much authentic in the candy corn realm, but it also has a heaping amount of vanilla frosting, buttercream, and other confections as well. I mean, just smelling this original 2014 pour, I'm smelling candy corn, but Honestly, it's like candy corn that's been placed on top of a vanilla cake with vanilla frosting. So let's compare this one to the country candle, candy corn. Uh, so it's as easy as this, folks. This is authentically candy corn. This has that smell of that fresh bag of candy corn, not the stale candy corn that's been sitting in the glass uh, candy dish on the dining room table for a couple of years. You know what I'm talking about. Or candy corn that's been recycled for two to three years. Maybe your parents did that like mine did. But this is the smell of fresh candy corn. There is that honey rich smell. This is very big on that buttercream vanilla frosting. This is like a happy birthday candy corn cupcake. And for me, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, other candy corn candles are not as intense as we want them to be sometimes. So by adding that vanilla, by adding that buttercream by adding more of that confection decadence this really is dynamite there's a little bit a little bit of this savory buttery note uh, think about the slightest uh, nuance of jelly belly buttered popcorn flavored jelly beans it has a little bit of that salty buttery quality and the biggest thing i want to say because i've been wanting to actually make this dessert for the longest time now and especially when i added a little bit of heat to this candle this smells like a candy corn creme brulee that's right creme brulee and what do i mean by that um, there's a little bit of caramelization to that candy corn. So imagine mashing up candy corn, putting it into a ramekin, and then taking a little bit of that flame, not burning the, the, the candy corn or the sugar, but just caramelizing that non-enzymatic browning. It changes the flavor profile when you caramelize or add heat to sugar. And that's what this smells like. This smells like warm, ooey gooey uh, vanilla frosting coated candy corn uh, and man is this gonna be a huge success for anyone who loves candy corn fragrances and to be honest this is just as good if not better than the original that I'm holding in my hand. Uh, I cannot wait to smell 
the limited edition tumbler, although um, I can't imagine it being much better than this country candle jar. Now let's continue to the, there's four new fragrances in the limited edition tumblers that I have in front of me. Let's give these a sniff. Now, again, I don't have the fragrance notes in front of me. I have read them uh, uh, a while ago. I remember some. I don't remember others. Look at that label. Again, take a close look at the eyes and the mouth. The hot spots on the label are reflective. We have the jack-o'-lantern looking quite evil with a misty blue backdrop. This could be uh, a pumpkin patch. This could be in the forest. But based on the name Graveyard Night, there's only one place this can be. Let's give this a sniff. So we have to begin with the baking spices. And whenever we talk about Halloween autumn candles and baking spices, it makes me nervous and it makes, I'm sure, a lot of you nervous because how many uh, Halloween autumn candles do we need with more pumpkin spice? The good news in this situation is that it is balanced and the spices are soft. They're actually not too spicy. If anything, this uh, initially smells like a pumpkin spice that we would experience inside of a coffee shop. Uh, pumpkin spice flavoring instead of smelling a bowl of freshly ground uh, uh, spices, toasted spices. We have what we would expect, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the ginger, a little bit of clove and some pumpkin puree. So that's something that people always are a little bit upset with a pumpkin themed candle when they don't actually smell the pumpkin flesh. There's a little bit of this gourd uh, aroma. It's not super intense and it's not like a roasted pumpkin. This is not like a butternut squash uh, situation. This is more of a raw, subtle gourd aroma. But there's something else happening in here that uh, is bringing me to uh, Halloween treats. Um, uh, if you're familiar with persimmon, persimmon seems to be popping up in candles uh, everywhere. Persimmon is a fruit um, here in the U.S. It's pretty much uh, only really uh, cultivated and harvested in California. And there's certainly... Uh, different varieties of persimmon um, and they don't have much of an aroma but they have big time flavor and when they're super ripe um, I always get this bubble gum like aroma it's 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 strange but actually very pleasant uh, and I'm not talking about bubblicious you know, fruity bubble gum. I'm not talking about juicy fruit. I'm talking about, you know, classic penny candy, uh, Bazooka Joe, Hubba Bubba, pink bubble gum. There's this little bit of a bubble gum fruity quality um, that's tucked away underneath these spices. And what it does for me is it provokes a little bit of that Halloween night, the sack of Halloween candies. Uh, so much bubble gum inside of that sack of tricks or treats. This is not a savory warm pumpkin treat, uh, pumpkin pie. This has that blend of soft pumpkin spice aromas uh, with a little bit of that candy-esque. I'm going with a persimmon uh, note on this candle, but just think of uh, the lingering aromas of old-timey, old-fashioned candies, especially a little bit of that bubble gum. There's probably a, a wood base note in here, but something that on cold sniff 
is really not overly uh, distinguishable, but uh, it's worth mentioning. So in your mind, just think of that little stem on top, that little curly Q stem on top of uh, your pumpkin, that little addition of that wooden note. For me, this definitely should be classified as a pumpkin and pumpkin spice candle. Graveyard night might make you think about being outside with the foliage, with the dew, with the pine needles, the blue spruce, and the smoke, and the campfire. Uh, I would put that aside. If that is your expectation of this, that's not what this is. But with that said, this, in my opinion, is a very well-balanced and blended pumpkin, pumpkin spice aroma. Graveyard Night by Kringle Candle. Let's continue. Haunted House. Yes. And on the label, we have this Bates Motel. Not the motel, but the, the Bates House inspired haunted house. So many possibilities. But what does this candle smell like? So no question that this candle is first and foremost a freshly toasted clove. It has that really warm baking spice smell to it. It's, you can't mistake it. Uh, it's just one of those spices uh, where there's no crossover between, um, you know, how cinnamon and nutmeg can smell the same. A very exotic, freshly toasted clove aroma. And if you remember the days when you'd be waiting in line for the concerts and people were smoking those clove cigarettes. Kids, don't smoke. Don't smoke. But the smell of those clove cigarettes, this is not smoky, but remember that smell of those clove cigarettes. Uh, that is what's going on in here. This doesn't smell like a clove that would go into an apple pie or a pumpkin pie. It smells more like that straight up clove or even that clove cigarette. But there's something else that I have to mention. There is this distinct resinous smell of myrrh. I really don't think it's in the fragrance description of this candle. But myrrh, it's a resin that's commonly blended with frankincense. We're probably at all at some point have experienced myrrh. It's really warm and very deep and robust. It's a little bit smoky. It's a little bit dusty. It can sometimes smell uh, like root beer or sarsaparilla. Uh, it has a, a kind of a, a, a nuance of a latex smell to it. Uh, it can be it can be even a little bit smoky. It has uh, once again a cola uh, quality to it. And uh, it also has a little bit of this black licorice. The myrrh shines through. The myrrh, you know, immediately brings me into the dank cellar of this haunted house or the fruit cellar of this haunted uh, house. Walking down those cellar stairs and you smell a little bit of that dustiness, the, the, the mustiness. Uh, and maybe even some lingering smoke from the wood stove in this house. Let's say it has a wood stove. And the wooden uh, qualities of this candle, perhaps from frankincense, perhaps from some other wooden accord, uh, provokes the idea of just really old, tattered, uh, beaten, broken down, decayed, uh, wooden floorboards or, or furniture in this haunted house. But with that said, really is a festive smell. This is definitely almost Christmas time. It even has this uh, beeswax uh, or bayberry uh, uh, candle aroma to it. Without knowing, seeing the label, I might 
my mind might go to the holidays, uh, to uh, the colder seasons of the year. But surprisingly, it works really well for this uh, candle, Haunted House. There's a little bit of perhaps some green vegetation. I want to say moss because of, you know, the concept of this candle. I think it's safe to say a few people might be a little bit thrown off with the, 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 the label and the name of this candle. But either way, I think this certainly is a refreshing change of pace for a Halloween candle. Hey, when you have these, this many Halloween candles, you need to make them different, you need to make them unique, and there's got to be something for everybody. So definitely a little bit surprising, but definitely not a letdown at all. Let's keep this going. It, or it's, alive. And we have that zombie arm, hand, protruding from the forest floor, covered in dirt and, and, uh, and earthworms, and you can imagine all of the crummy stuff in the fingernails and the decaying flesh on this hand. We can even see a little bit of a tombstone in the background. So the, the dead have come back to life. They have been resurrected, or at least this one particular zombie. And uh, what a night to do it because there's a beautiful sky and a full moon. Let's give this a sniff. It's alive. Now, when you think of it's alive, or when I think of it's alive, I'm thinking of, you know, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, not necessarily a zombie. So let's see where this goes. Oh, I mean, talk about surprise. This is going to take a second. This, I mean, without talking about the concept of the candle, this smells really good. So let's talk about the, the graveyard. Uh, outdoor qualities first. There is uh, a very sweet, dewy grass quality. You know, this is like uh, fresh grass um, with that morning dew or evening spooky dew, but it is not this pungent, green, aggressive smell. This is a very pretty, bright, uh, green grassy smell and what I think is helping that is the citrus uh, components in here this is not just zesty but it's really bright and really tart I mean this is like we just pulled up grass uh, off uh, the ground and we put it in a bowl we grabbed a little bit of the soil we grabbed a little bit of the mineral rich uh, uh, stones and then we took um, some uh, lemons and we just squeezed the lemons inside that bowl maybe zested a little bit of that lemons and tossed it together there's this really bright green grassy smell okay I just thought of something but I'm gonna save that to the end because sometimes they get a little silly. There's a little bit of spice in here too, uh, just a little bit. Sandalwood, I would, I, I would classify this as sandalwood, uh, almost cologne-like wooden base note in here that to me, uh, smelling that wood reminds me of, okay, well this zombie's gotta be coming out of something, right? Maybe he's coming out of a wooden casket. Um, so, that sandalwood reminds me of the coffin. But what I really think I'm picking up on is ginger. And this makes me think, okay, great, right? We have the lemon, we have the ginger, and we have this wooden quality that we could arguably say is an oak barrel uh, aroma. Uh, the oak barrel, um, being think about whiskey or bourbon and the lemon and the ginger and perhaps a little bit of honey we're getting this hot toddy 
either way, this does have a big lemon and ginger quality. I mean, I would go as far to say uh, if you made a, a ginger infused lemonade uh, with other added berries as well. I have no problem uh, going out on a limb and saying, I'm smelling things like a little bit of strawberry and maybe some blacker berries, like a blackberry or black currant in here. Definitely in stark contrast of the gruesomeness of this label. You know, you're thinking this is going to be, oh, you know, horrific, very scary. I mean, this looks like the poster of uh, Sam Raimi's original Evil Dead, the hand coming out of the ground. But really, this is bubbly and fun. It's got just enough of uh, the, the earthy uh, uh, qualities, the grass, the ginger kind of brings you outside. Perhaps there's a little bit of a blue spruce or some kind of pine. Um, that kind of coincides with that sandalwood that I was talking about. But uh, through and through, this is a very bubbly, playful can uh, candle, almost a candy, because it does remind me so much of candy. And something else that I smell in this candle, and uh, I always try to add something a little bit fun, not to be silly, but to really create this smell-o-vision experience between the two of us. This smells like Mountain Dew. Very sweet, very tart, and not in a subtle way. Very scary label. A very fun and playful aromatic experience. Let us continue. Day of the Dead. And not as in the George Romero saga, Night of the Living Dead saga, but as in the holiday Day of the Dead, we see this beautiful makeup and this black top hat on this woman. Very striking, gorgeous label. So not sweet as in like sweet candies or the sweet treats, the, the sugared covered bread. This is much more of a musky uh, experience here and a really rich and pleasant way. This is not a pungent perfume or cologne. There's certainly a powdery quality here, but you know, when you say powdery, you know, it, it doesn't communicate uh, sometimes the, the, the prettiness of the fragrance enough. This is a floral musk, but very sweeter, softer kind of florals. And immediately that just makes me think of Day of the Dead, the flowers that are left um, behind for the loved ones. Uh, incense, because this is a very resin-driven candle. And unlike the myrrh that I mentioned on Haunted House, this is uh, something completely different. It, more in the realm of, if you've ever smelled like a dragon's blood uh, candle. Dragon's blood, uh, it's, it sounds creepy, but it's really, it's a proprietary blend of plant resins that uh, is used in a lot of fragrances that you would find in essential oil shops or uh, new age shops, uh, magic shops, spiritual shops. Resinous and musky combination and they're so soft and pretty and there really truly is a sweetness here but just don't think of sweetness in the form of candy i i would easily imagine um a, this would be a, a a perfume i mean this certainly could be unisex but i think uh, many women would are going to smell this candle and wish they had this in a body spray because this is quite nice you know it's enchanting it's magical it it smells like like i said like a really classy boutique each one has been fun in its own way but this to me is i think probably the most impressive aromatic profile so far 
Day of the Dead. So let us now continue with the Country Candle Halloween fragrances. The first one being Black Cat. Again, this did come in the limited edition tumbler, but I chose this one for the sheer fact that uh, I want shelf life on these candles. I want these candles to last a long time. I don't plan on burning all of these candles this season, like burning them all up. I want these candles to sit on my shelf so I can burn some this year, next year, and years to come. Plus, the color of this wax is incredible. This is that classic Granny Smith apple Halloween color. Uh, let's give this one a smell. I mean, I, I'm looking at this and, you know, you think right away that it's going to smell like apple. So let's see what we have here. Oh, man. Uh, once again, different. So far, I can say this. Nothing that I've smelled so far is similar or too similar these are all quite a bit different, which is great because when you're releasing this many Halloween candles, uh, the last thing you want to do is be uh, redundant. So the first thing coming through to me on this is the actual branches, the tree of uh, uh, that this cat is perched on. It's the cedar wood smell. More specifically, cut up firewood. Uh, fire that has been split, uh, it has been dried out, and has been, you know, is prepared to be thrown into the fireplace or the wood stove. There is this cedar wood uh, holiday, uh, cold weather uh, provoking aroma to this candle. Uh, but there is a muskiness. Again, there is this muskiness, and I find that Kringle does this you know, they did this with Wolf Spain and uh, a lot of other companies. Whenever there's a, a, a cat or a wolf or some kind of furry creature concept, there's this muskiness uh, at play. And this is no exception. This perhaps has a bergamot muskiness to it uh, with additional florals as well, I'm sure. Uh, along with that cedar frankincense before I even smelled the frankincense what made me think of it was it was bringing me pulling me to the holiday season it gives us that fresh wood aromatic uh, with uh, the the citrus nuances that a frankincense can uh, deliver on and I'm gonna also say a warm amber aroma a uh, little bit soapy, but very warm, cozy, amber-colored bar soap aroma that brings it to a very warm place. And it also has that warm uh, toasted clove that uh, I was smelling on the haunted house. So musky citrusy, wooden, uh, you know, the sandalwood and the cedar wood with that soapy amber slash musky quality. Black Hat by Country Candle. Let's move on. So a place, a story, and a tale, and even superstition that I am very familiar with. Sleepy Hollow on that label we can see the Hessian trooper, headless, that specter guardian of the cemetery, axe or hatchet above his head, riding his steed through the cemetery, the boneyard, looking, uh, searching for his lost head. So what is Country Candle's take on Sleepy Hollow, New York, the headless horseman, or, Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Let's give this one a sniff. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there are a bunch of folks that were concerned about this particular candle based on the fragrance description 
on the website when it was available for sale. Lavender and honey, uh, it just didn't seem, um, based on the description, to fit not only an autumn candle, but sleepy hollow. Lavender can be anywhere from soft and sweet, like a dried lavender, to a very pungent, floral, uh, freshly picked lavender. You know, when you pick that fresh lavender and you rub it up in your hands, and you get a lot of the green notes as well, where this is kind of more of a spicier lavender. And this works because although it, it's, you know, definitively, you know, clearly lavender, uh, it's the spiciness of this floral vegetation does bring us outside. Uh, and it, uh, the spiciness uh, adds this kind of foreboding, eerie quality. And because, you know, a spicy floral uh, needs to have something to balance it out, it's cut with that honey. And the honey in the description of this candle is uh, not just carelessly thrown in there. This really does smell like honey, like raw honey. And that does a couple things. Um, raw honey is not like the honey that we smell in the little honey bear in the grocery store. It has a very distinct, uh, rich aroma to it. Look, this could be an apple candle. This could be a pumpkin spice candle. This could be an autumn leaves candle. There's so many different things uh, this candle could be. And the fact that, uh, based on my initial sniff, that it's working, even though the literal components in this candle don't necessarily speak uh, in autumn terms, my mind is going there. I just got a little bit of this, like a little bit of this, like the black licorice quality coming through. There is something twisted offbeat to this candle that allows my imagination to go yeah, into Halloween mode, into the spirit of Halloween. This doesn't smell soapy, but this smells like a high quality handcrafted bar of soap that would have citrus, lavender, oatmeal, and honey in it, perhaps. And this is certainly not an obvious take. Uh, Sleepy Hollow by Country Candle. I dig it. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with that. Next on the list, trick or treat. At some point, every candle company in the world has had a candle called trick or treat. So why not country candle? Roasted chestnuts. We think we all know, at least I did, uh, before I actually smelled a roasted chestnut. I think we all think we assume what it smells like. But if you ever smell roasted chestnuts on an open fire, it has a savory sweet potato a yam-like quality. So roasted chestnuts and hazelnuts. A raw nut component here. You know, because the hazelnut to me is like a hazelnut creamer. And uh, the roasted chestnut, again, is roasted. Crack up some walnut shells and throw them into the mix. Going beautifully off that hazelnut, this mocha chocolate coffee cocoa powder aroma. Uh, really, we could say a hot fudge to a darker chocolate or darker hot cocoa beverage with a little bit of spice, not Swiss Miss, uh, not super sweet milk chocolate, but this is more of like a darker decadent ganache type chocolate that we would see on a, a fancier, more gourmet brownie. And I love that because, uh, you know, first I'm thinking coffee and hazelnut, but now I'm thinking dark chocolate brownie covered in 
uh, walnuts, right? That was my father's favorite treat in the world. And just enough spice in here to add to the complexity, uh, but not redundancy of baking spice uh, in an autumn Halloween candle. This is definitely still very sweet. So the way I'm going to explain this is if you had that dark chocolate hot cocoa, throw in some of those uh, marshmallows, baby. Throw some of them in there, sweeten things up a little bit. Based on my memory of reading the fragrance notes of this candle, this seems to be uh, exactly what it was described to be. This isn't just a hot fudge sundae or a chocolate candy bar. Like I said, a gourmet, darker chocolate, ganache, coffee bean, nutty, that's still very uh, sweet. Think of the hazelnut creamer or those marshmallows. Trick or treat. It may not smell like, you know, a bag of treats, but it certainly may smell like an amazing hot beverage that you would consume after coming in uh, from a cold night uh, trick-or-treating. We still have one more zombie night. So if It's Alive was not enough for you, we have yet another zombie concept. What does a zombie night smell like? Oh, ho. Uh, if you are all about springtime, green, grassy, meadow, fresh cut grass, florals, dandelion stems, dandelion milk, flower petals, pollen, springtime fragrances. Let me tell you, this is something you're gonna enjoy. This is a very green candle. Chlorophyll rich, big time florals like freesia, stargazer lily, gardenia flowers, very powerful, very, very pungent aroma. Again, nothing like any of these others. This is super clean and fresh. This could easily be a scent to a, a bar of soap, even though it doesn't smell soapy. This could be a uh, uh, a mist uh, spray that you use in your house or in your car. I'm getting freesia flowers now, a lot of citrus top notes. A little bit of pine tree action. I'm not gonna go there. I know that's what it says in the fragrance description, but I really think it's more about the florals and more specifically, the green stems of the florals, the dandelion milk, uh, the rose clippings. Very fresh, very greenhouse candle here. Halloween? Well, maybe if this is your thing. This, I'm a little bit sensitive to, you know, very big green candles uh, like this. But with that said, it is super intense really pretty smelling. This can certainly be a fun twist for a Halloween candle. Uh, Zombie Night by Country Candle. Folks, uh, I am going to be talking more about all of these candles in the coming days, in the coming weeks, throughout September and October. I'm going to be taking these candles out of the house, sharing them with complete strangers, bringing them to farms, bringing them to places where uh, I can talk to uh, strangers and get their feedback on what they think of these candles. If there's anything about any of these candles that I did not address, uh, even the ones that I didn't talk about, like Wolfsbane, Fright Night, 
and uh, a, a few of the others, uh, please uh, let me know in the comments below any questions you might have. And if you don't have any questions, let me know in the comments below which one of these, based on my descriptions, my initial impressions, which one speaks to you the most. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching for this very special moment for me to, to really see that witch's cauldron uh, hold it in my hand a brand new pour uh, it's been it's been quite a journey to see it uh, see this candle uh, come back to life but it's with us and I'm so glad that everyone gets to experience it now that's gonna be it for me today folks but you better be sure that I will be seeing you soon but until then be good and happy hauntings